Let us see our next question. What do you mean by C++ access specifiers? Access specifiers define the access rights for the statements or functions that follows it until another access specifier appears or till the end of a class. There are three types of access specifiers. Private, Public and Protected. So these access specifiers mention the access rights for the statements and functions of one class until another access specifier appears or till that is the end of the class. So the class B's elements that is declared to be private cannot be shared by class A or class C whereas if it is public then it can be shared by A and C. If the value is declared to be the protected of class B then it can be shared by class A since it is in the same package whereas it cannot be accessed by C because it is under a different package. Similarly you have your default access specifier to be protected. So your values can be accessed within the same package but it cannot be accessed outside the package. These kind of questions are uh, frequently asked in Infosys and Polaris te technical rounds. Let us see our next question. What is this pointer? This is a keyword that is used as a hidden argument to all non-static member function calls and it is available as a local variable within the body of all non-static functions. It is a constant pointer and it holds the memory address of the current object. This pointer is not available in static member functions as static member functions can be called without any object. Hence, this pointer is used for accessing the values which it is pointing to within the function or the body of all non-static functions. These type of questions are highlighted in Infosys and Polaris interviews. Let us see our next question. In how many ways we can initialize an int variable in C++? In C++, the variables can be initialized in two ways. One is using your traditional method using your assignment operator that is your equal to. If I write down the statement as int i is equal to 10, it means that the value of i is initialized to 10. And a second method is using C++ constructor notation. Here I can use the constructor as int i of 10 in the sense the constructor will be run and it will set the value of i to be 10. So these are the two ways in which we can initialize a variable in C++. If you see over here a program has the initialization in a first traditional method over here. So it can be initialized using your assignment operator. Let us see our next question. What do you mean by storage class? Storage class are used to specify the visibility or the scope and lifetime of the symbols of functions and variables. It means the storage class specifies where all the variables of the function can be accessed and till what time those variables will be available for access for the rest of the program during the execution. If you see over here, we have declared the value of int c equal to 12 and we have specified it with the storage class as extern. It means it can be accessed 
globally throughout the execution of the program so that is what we mean by the access which can be done using extern that is a storage class extern there are different types of storage class specifiers if you see they are auto which means Your storage is done in the memory's RAM and the scope of the variable is local. That is only the local procedures can access it. Within the function, it can access for auto variables. That is the lifetime is within the function. Your static is stored in the memory of RAM. And the scope of the variable is local and the lifetime is from when the flow reaches the first declaration of the static to the termination of the program so until the program terminates the static values will be the same when it goes to register the storage is in CPU register and the variable is having the scope to be local and the lifetime of the variable will be within the function Within the function, the variable can be accessed if it is of type register. Here we have seen extern. It is stored in memory of the RAM and the scope is global till the end of the main program. That is, if your value is declared to be extern, then till the end of the main program, it has its scope. Let us see our next question what is meant by copy constructor and when it is called copy constructor is a constructor which creates an object by initializing it with the objects of the same class which has been created previously copy constructor is used to initialize one object from another of the same type if you see copy constructor say here we are passing the value of other and if it is an object of my class then it will have its own set of x c and s so other is a type of my class hence it will have its own pair of x c and s so we are assigning the value of x c and s of other to a new value of x c and s this is done using your copy constructor and when a copy constructor will be called it will be called in the following situations when an object of the class is returned by the value when the object of a class is passed by value as an argument when an object is constructed based on another object of the same class when compiler generates a temporary object in these cases you will be having a copy constructor let us move on to our next question what is difference between shallow clone and deep clone and which will be the default one if you see shallow clone is nothing but copying the reference pointer of the object which means the new object is also pointing towards the same memory reference of the old object and the memory usage is hence lower it will be accessing the same memory of the object which it is referring to in a deep clone the object will produce a copy of itself a new memory is allocated for the object and the contents hence there will be a larger memory usage hence your deep clone is having the same set of the copy of the object itself with a separate memory allocation these pattern of questions are asked in Infosys and Polaris let us see our next question what are virtual functions and what is its use 
virtual functions are member functions of the class and it is declared using the keyword virtual when a base class type reference is initialized using the object of subclass type that is your base class type you have your base class over here to be a and your subclass to be b which is inherited as the public of a and i'm creating an object for a so a is created with the reference object so base class type reference is initialized using your object of the subclass type for the subclass type i'm creating an object ob and i'm assigning it to the base class reference so when i do this and then an overridden method which is declared as virtual is invoked using your base reference so here we have our overridden method which is declared as virtual using your base reference the base is a and the reference is pa so using this pa i am going to invoke the overridden method and that will give you the method in child class object so if you see this will return the value of b so our output is 2 so this is known as virtual functions use that is you can use the derived class function by assigning the reference of the base class to the object of the derived class let us see our next question what do you mean by early binding by default matching of function call with the correct function definition happens during your compile time This is known as static or early or compile time binding. Static binding is achieved using function overloading or operator overloading. Even though there are two or more functions with same name, compiler uniquely identifies each function depending on the parameters passed to the functions only during the compile time. If you see here the value of phi is identified to be the value in value only during your compile time and this is known as static binding let us move on to our next question what is meant by late binding if you see c++ provides a facility to specify that the compiler should match function calls with the correct definition at run time and this is called as dynamic binding late binding or runtime binding that is your binding is done during your runtime dynamic binding is achieved using virtual functions here your base class pointer points to the derived class object and the function declared virtual in your base class then the matching function is identified at the runtime using your virtual table entry If you see over here we are assigning a pointer with the add function and when we are running the statement we get the addition of both the numbers this is nothing but dynamic binding and it is happening during your run time 